So let's take a look at specialmaths.c. It takes command line arguments, so it's now starting to use the argument vector, and it's using argv with a2i, which expects in an integer as a string and converts it to an integer as an integer. And in this particular case, I've chosen some special math that I know will cause Visual Studio to generate the assembly instruction that I'm looking for, which is LEA. Now this is called special maths because I originally thought I was being funny because there was a politician who shall remain nameless who said maths instead of math, which is funny to us Americans because we say math, we don't say maths. Now you can imagine my chagrin when I learned that the British and other folks who swear fealty to a queen happen to say maths unironically, and so all of the irony is lost here. But for the American audience, special maths. Ha ha. But enough about maths, let's talk about LEA. So you can see here that it's using an RMX form, but back on the RMX addressing slide, I said Intel syntax most of the time square brackets means to treat the value within as a memory address. And LEA is the exception that proves the rule. And so specifically with LEA load effective address, you will see something that looks like the RMX form, but in the manual it's actually just called M. And it's the exception to the rule that square brackets means to dereference memory. Basically, when you're using an LEA, although you'll see this form, it's going to add that up, it's going to calculate some value, and then rather than de dereferencing it and going to memory, it's just going to take the value and load that effective address into the register that's specified in the assembly instruction. So you'll frequently see LEA used in pointer arithmetic, and that can be of the form, for instance, if you just have a pointer and you do plus plus, then you know that the increase in the address is the increase of the size of the of pointers on that particular architecture. So if it's you know a pointer on a 64-bit system, it's going to be plus plus adds eight to the value, and so LEA could be used for that. It can also be used for things like calculating the address of an element of an array, because again, you can have some base of an array, an index of the array, it's gonna have the size of the array, and it'll use that to calculate the address if you know the C code was looking for an address. So just as an example, if you imagine that you had RBX having two, RDX having hex 1000, then this calculation, this LEA, would say 1000 plus two times eight, which is hex 10 plus five, and so it would calculate up hex 1015 and put that into the RAX register. It wouldn't dereference memory, it wouldn't treat that as an address, it would just treat it as a value that's going to be loaded into the register specified. So specifically with LEA, load effective address, you will see the square brackets form and you will see RMX form, but it is not actually going to memory at that address. It is just calculating some value and treating it as if, oh, I was just supposed to calculate a pointer value, and then it just loads that value into RAX. It doesn't dereference the memory, it just treats it like it's a pointer address and loads the address, loads the effective address, as it were, into a register, for instance. So frequently you will see this used with things like pointer arithmetic. So if the C code is doing some pointer arithmetic, that may turn into an LEA because it can take, you know, some base register for a pointer plus whatever the pointer arithmetic was. If you were trying to get the address of some element of an array, well, then it might generate an LEA assembly instruction. So I'm going to want you to go through this code, but you can't go through this code unless you pass a command line parameter. So in order to do that, you right click on the project, go to its properties, make sure you're in the debug, Active64. Under the debugging entry, you have command line, command arguments, and just put in something there like 16, for instance. All right, so once again, I must ask you for your support and helping me help you by having you go through the assembly. Now at this point, making a stack diagram is not as important. We've covered most of the stuff we're going to cover with respect to the stack and stack diagrams. So I want to make sure that you understand the assembly, understand how LEA is being used. So just step through the assembly and make sure you understand why all of those instructions are there.